Hello, welcome to lecture 109, Node Voltage Method for Circuit Analysis. The nodes are just to help me stay focused. The Node Voltage Method in a Circuit Analysis works by finding the voltages at each node in a circuit using Kirchhoff's Current Law, which we covered in video 106. Remember that a node is where the junction of two or more current paths intersect. Node 1, 2, three, four. We're going to apply a systematic method of node voltage method to analyze our circuit in figure one. Figure one circuits, the same one we used in video 107, 108. First determined number of nodes, we have four. One, two, three, four. This is, these are all the same. <clears throat> Select one node as a reference. We'll select node B. All voltages will be relative to the reference node. Assign voltage designated to each node where the voltage is unknown. We will do that. Assign currents to each node where the voltage is unknown, except for the reference node, this one right here. The current directions are arbitrary. These could be going, I3 could be going out instead of in. I2 could be going in instead of out. And I1 could be going out instead of in. It will just change the sign. Uh, the current goes into a node, it's positive. If it's leaving the node, it is negative. Uh, uh, current, okay, apply Kirchhoff's current law to each node where the currents are assigned. Express the current equations in terms of voltage and solve the equations for the unknown node voltage, which is VA. That's our unknown voltage. We know node C because it is VDC1 with reference to B. So the drop across here. We know, we know node D to be VDC2 because it is a drop from here to here. The only one we don't know is this one right here. VA over R2 and using VB as a reference. Okay, we first begin by establishing the nodes, which we have. In this case, there are four, as indicated in figure one. Second, we use node B as a reference, which we are. Think of this as a circuit ground. Nodes C and D are already known to be the source voltages. The voltage at node A is the only unknown in this case and is determined by VA. Now remember in uh, video 107, and 107 you had three unknowns. 108 you had two unknowns. Now, in this, we have one unknown. Third, arbitrarily assign the currents at node A, as indicated in figure one. We have done that. Fourth, apply Kirchhoff's current law at node A, which is I1 minus I2 plus I3 equals zero. I1 is positive, it's going into the node. I2 is negative, going away from the node. And I3 is positive, going into the node. The fifth will express the currents in terms of circuit voltages using Ohm's law as follow. Remember, the current equals the voltage divided by the resistance. So I1 equals V1 over R1 equals VDC1 minus VA over R1. And that is this right here. This right here. VDC1 comes out minus VA over R1. Or we could use our circuit down here. But uh, then I2 equals V2 over R2, which is VA over R2. VA over R2. So you can see that this VDC1 over R1, VDC1 minus VA over R1, this is just VA over R2. The third one, V3 over R3 equals VDC2 minus VA over R3. And again, we'll go with this, that's this, VDC2 minus VA over R3. So now we have one unknown, VA, and we have three, three equations for the three currents. This solve for VA. So we assign the following values. This, these are the same values we had in our last circuit. Uh, R1 equals 50 ohms. R2 equals 20 ohms. R3 equals 75 ohms. VDC1 is 10 volts. And VDC2 is 5 volts. Then your circuit will appear like this. Question to be answered, what is the node voltage at node A? What is the voltage at node A? First, we determine that there are four nodes. Again, we have done that. And we select node B to be our reference node. The unknown 
node voltage is VA as indicated in figure two right there. We don't know what that is. This is the only unknown voltage. Currents are assigned at node A as shown in figure two. I1 is positive going into it. I2 is negative going away from it. I3 is positive going into it. That Now we express I1 in uh, Ohm's law equivalent of VDC1 minus VA over R1 plus or minus the VA over R2 because remember this is negative plus VDC2 minus VA over R3. Again, we'll just go over that. See, VDC1, which is node C, over minus VA over 50 ohms, or R1, that's I1. VDC2, which is node D, minus VA over 75 ohms is I3. And then VA over R2 is I2 but it's negative because it's going away. So no reduction, we're reducing down. We we'll go ahead and multiply this out. And this, this is over 50 and this is over 50. So it'd be 10 over 50 minus VA over 50 minus VA over 20, I2, plus five over 75, VA over 75 equals zero. They're all negative, we combine them. We bring the scalar values to the right side of the equation and leave the variable over on the left side of the equation so we can reduce and solve for VA. But that we need further reduction here on this part of the equation as well as here we could have just uh, figured these using our calculator. But we'll reduce it the same way we're going to reduce this side of the equation. So both sides are negative though, and so we both multiply by negative one on both sides. Remember that doesn't change the answer. Whatever you multiply on the left side, as long as you do it to the right side of the equation, the answer will be remain the same. It just helps you in reducing, especially in trigonometry. Here it can do little trig, trig tricks. So we need a simple algebraic trick to get a common denominator. So you ask yourself, what is the lowest number 50, 20, and 75 can multiply can multiply by a number to n equal also remember that if you multiply a, num a fractions numerator and denominator by the same number the original number remains the same so now the equations become 6va uh, plus 15va plus 4va divided by 300 300 is a common denominator so i take 6 times 50 that gives me 300 that's where the 6 come from 15 times 20 gives me 300 and 4 times 75 gives me 300 so i put that in, uh, in the denominator and then that, that alters the numerator a proper appropriately to keep the number the same we do the same for the right side of the equation 3 times 50 is uh, 150 and then 2 times 75 is 150. Further reducing, we get 25 VA over 300 equals 400 over 150. We bring the numerator by the 25 into the denominator on the right side of the equation and bring the denominator on the left side to the numerator on the right side of the equation. Further reducing, you get VA equals 40 times 300 divided by 25 times 150, which reduces down to 3.2 volts. So VA is 3.2 volts. We're going to do this again using PTC uh, MathCAD just to show you how to do it in that. And then we'll go to the QUCS to check how well our math is and see if we get 3.2 volts. It's going to be fun. All right. Okay. Uh, I decided not to do the PTC MathCAD example because the mathematics is so simple that uh, it was just kind of silly to go to all the trouble to use the, the PTC MathCAD. So anyway, I just jumped into the QUCS and I got a probe. I opened up my uh, mesh node analysis circuit, and uh, which is right here. I added this probe that is right here by going to the probes, voltage probe, brought it over, Rotate it, well, escape, right click, rotate once, right click, rotate again, and one more time, 
That allowed me to line it up. I did that. I had to zoom in, came up to the wire wrap, put that over there, connect, connected this, and then I connected this after that. Let me delete that. Then I hit simulate. Came over, saw no errors. Came over here. I had to rename this. <clears throat> And so uh, the VA was uh, the name of the probe, but I changed the name of the probe by by right clicking on it, Edit Properties. It was called Probe Four, or yeah, Probe Four, and I renamed it uh, VA. The VA is the uh, node that we did not know the value of. So I hit Apply. And when I simulated, I opened this up. I had to delete the probe three, come down here. This this was not here. I it was it was empty. I said add that to show into the graph. I said apply, hit OK, <clears throat> and voila, we get three point two volts, just exactly what we calculated using the node voltage method of circuit analysis. So that ends this lab. That's that's all. I hope you had a good time. It worked very well. We will be going over uh, multi-loop uh, mesh and node uh, later. But we're going to go into the uh, uh, RC circuits, RL circuits, RCL circuits. We'll be doing the graphs, plotting how long it takes to charge a capacitor and an inductor, and doing the low-pass, band-pass, and high-pass circuits next Okay, have fun. Don't forget to select subscribe and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video.